Hello, my name is Hudson Samuels. At the time of this recording, I am the Vice President of UT Design Makerspace. Welcome to our first section of the 3D printing training. This training will be very specific to UT Design Makerspace, so if you're finding this video randomly on YouTube, we recommend checking out a different tutorial for 3D printing. However, if you're viewing this specifically for UT Design Makerspace, welcome and I hope that you get to learn a lot from this video. Please keep in mind that this is specifically for the online training portion of our 3D printer training. If you're interested in an in-person training, please consider going there before watching this video, as watching this video is not necessary for any in-person training. However, if you do fail the exam at the end of this training, you will be required to attend an in-person training. Please try to take notes or watch very carefully as I discuss various topics throughout this training. So first, let's discuss some basics of 3D printing, so pros and cons. There are many pros and cons to pretty much everything in life, and 3D printing is one of those things. First of all, it's very easy to get started with 3D printing. There's a lot of test models out there, and you can use it for a whole variety of other skills, such as cosplay or engineering. You can create some really amazing things like this Iron Man cosplay. However, there's also some cons. Printing can take a lot of time, so some other methods like uh, using leatherworking or woodworking or using foam may be a lot more beneficial for whatever it is you're trying to make. Prints also fail fairly often. You can see here we've got a spaghetti printing fail where the print has just failed spectacularly, the nozzle has lost its hold on the print and just went everywhere. So if you've decided that 3D printing is the right option for you, let's go ahead and talk about the process. There's three main parts to 3D printing. The first portion focuses on design. Using this, you'll get an STL model file, which you will then slice. This sliced file, the G-code, can be interpreted by the printer, which will allow it to print your model. So first, let's start with designing. There's three main ways to design a model or download a model for your specific project. The first way is to just download it from a website. Two of my favorites are Thingiverse and My Mini Factory, but there are many websites out there. Just do keep in mind to keep yourself safe when downloading any file from the internet. Another option is to 3D model something yourself. Some beginner CAD tools include Fusion 360 and Tinkercad, or you can use a more artistic styled uh, modeling software like Blender. However, this isn't really recommended as it is a little bit harder to model in Blender, at least for beginners. Your final option is to extract from a game or some other multimedia project, and we recommend a website called The Models Resource for this, as there are a lot of various video game models on that website. However, you can also try extracting the models yourself, but do be careful as you don't want to corrupt your save file or anything like that. The next important part of 3D printing is the slicing portion. Slicing is what actually creates that file that you're going to send to the 3D printer. So the first thing you want to do is open Prusa Slicer. Prusa Slicer is the only slicer that we officially support at UT Design Makerspace. Although you're allowed to use other slicers like Cura, we do only recommend using Prusa Slicer in our environment. However, do feel free to use other ones at your own discretion. To import your model, simply click the model button at the top of the screen or drag and drop your model from the file explorer. There are six important steps when you're slicing your model. The first one is orienting your model for optimal printing. This is done by using the move and rotate tools to sort of align your print where you want it. We recommend using the exact numbers on the bottom right of the screen rather than the tools where you can drag because this will allow you to get very specific and avoid any edges that look flat but are actually slightly angled. The next thing is to check your print profile. This is more or less just what type of printer you're using. Then the print material. Uh, in most cases, you're going to be using generic PLA. Uh, we'll talk about that more at the end. You'll want to choose your quality. So the lower the number means the higher the quality because those layer heights are much shorter. So whenever your filament is being shot out the end of the 3D printer, and it's slowly building your object, it's doing it layer by layer. So the smaller those layers are, the higher detail it's going to be. However, that also means increased time. For example, if your layer height was 0.1 millimeters, uh, having a layer height of 0.05 millimeters would take nearly double the time because you are splitting it into double the amount of layers. So try and find a good balance between the two. 
There's also some labels within Prusa Slicer for which print qualities are pretty good for different types of prints if you're a little lost. Enable some supports if they're needed. Um, if you have any sort of air um, in between the print bed and where you're printing, you may need some supports. They're like little pillars that are generated beneath your print, so that way it has something to print on top of when it gets to that layer. And choose an appropriate infill. So infill is the percentage of the inside of the model that is actually occupied by plastic. Uh, we'll go over this more in the demonstration portion, but just know that 15% is a good starting number. Next, let's talk about setting up your print. So the first thing you'll need to do is actually log into the slicing computer or the Makerspace member's Wi-Fi. Now to do this, you'll actually need your Makerspace login. If you don't have a Makerspace login, don't worry. Super easy to set up. Go to register.utdmaker.space. Again, that's register.utdmaker.space. And once you've gone there, click the sign in button at the top right, and then hit register. Please avoid clicking sign in with Discord or attempting to sign in with your UT Dallas identity because these will not work. Also, make sure that under net ID, you will only list the three letters and six digits of your net ID. Do not include the at utdallas.edu. Google Chrome will try to autofill it with your email sometimes. So again, do not enter your email for the net ID portion only the three letters and the six numbers. After you use your Makerspace login to sign in, slice or download your G-code. We highly recommend slicing because downloading your G-code may lead to something incompatible with our printers. After you have your G-code, log into Octoprint. All you need to do is go to the color of the printer .utd .ms on Edge or any other browser on the slicing computer or your own computer. For certain printers, there may not be a color, such as our new Ender 3 Max. At the time of this recording, you would just go to max.utd.ms. However, most printers you can go somewhere like green.utd.ms and it'll get you to the right spot. Once you're at Octoprint, use your Makerspace login to sign in. Then drag in your G code from the file explorer to the left side of the screen or click the upload button in the file browser. Please keep in mind not to drag it to the right side of the screen or click upload to SD card. This will take significantly longer and waste a lot of time and resources on our end. So please drag it on the left side of the screen or click upload. Once you're ready to go, you can hit print. However, you'll first want to load your filament. This will be covered in the demonstration section or the second section of this video. So once you've finished this one, please make sure to follow up and watch the second section. Let's talk about some warnings that you may encounter while printing. First, you'll want to double check your slicing. Obviously, what you're giving the printer, you want to make sure it's perfect. Otherwise, you may run into issues, which will just cause you further troubles down the line. Next, check your printer. Make sure there's no obstructions, such as somebody's print or their support material left on there, as well as any warning messages. If you see something that says, printer halted, please reset, something along those lines, You'll definitely want to use a different printer, contact an officer and tell them the printer is broken, and just overall, you know, uh, avoid any printer that looks like it's unsafe to use. Make sure your filament is loaded before you start printing. It sounds a little silly, but a lot of people do forget from time to time to actually load their filament. And make sure you clean down any dirty print beds. So you can see here on the right, uh, this is a glass bed with a lot of uh, sort of grime left on it from the last person who printed there. Just take a paper towel, some isopropyl alcohol usually left by the printers, open that up, dab the paper towel, make sure you close the alcohol, and just scrub down that bed. It should get rid of any dirt or uh, left on filament. However, sometimes there will be a little bit left on there and that's totally okay. Just try and get off as much as you can. Now let's talk about after the print. First, wait until the bed is cooled. Prints are very easy to remove from a cooled bed compared to one that's still hot because the PLA will still be adhered to the bed. After that, there are two options. Your first option is if you print it on a flex print sheet, such as on the Ender 3 or the Prusa, 
you can actually remove that print sheet and bend it, and your print should come off fairly easily. However, if you print it on a glass bed such as on the Ender 3 Max or the CR10 V2, you will need to wait until the bed cools completely and then sort of force it off. Sometimes you may have to use some sort of plastic card underneath your print or a mallet, uh, some sort of object to get off that print, but ensure that you are staying safe while doing this because we don't want any damage to our property, but more importantly, we don't want any damage to yourself. Parts should come off very easily, so do not use a scraper. These can harm our beds very, very easily, and we don't want any permanent damage left from somebody using a scraper. If you see a metal spatula, do not use it. Keep in mind we have cameras throughout the makerspace and we will know if you use this tool. Unload your filament once you're done as well, and make sure to take it with you if you don't want to leave it at the space. Please keep in mind we aren't responsible for any filament left in the space, especially if there's not a sticky note with your name left on it. And clean down any dirty print beds. So if you printed on the uh, CR10 V2 or the Ender 3 Max, uh, since those print beds are glass, sometimes they'll have some filament left in them, and you'll need to scrub it off with a paper towel like we mentioned earlier. Please just try to make sure that the 3D printers are presentable for the next person that chooses to use them. Let's go over filaments. In the past, I mentioned you're going to be using generic PLA most of the time, and the reason being PLA is the most widely accessible and usable uh, filament for 3D printing. It's really good for cosmetic uses, as well as lightly used engineering parts. However, for something a little more serious, you may need to use a different filament like PETG. If you need a different filament than PLA, please reach out to us and we can discuss with you. However, the only filaments that are approved by default are PLA, PLA Pro, and PLA Plus. Keep in mind that this does not include hybrid PLA filaments such as PLA Wood or PLA Marble. These will destroy our nozzle and you will be responsible if you use these filaments. You can buy filament at Micro Center, Amazon, and other online retailers. If you need a filament roll the day of, I recommend going to Micro Center. However, because there are some reports of inconsistency, if you're willing to wait a day or two, feel free to check Amazon and look by the top rated items on there for PLA and whatever color you need. Generally, Amazon has a lot of options available and they are a little bit more consistent than Micro Center. However, you can also go through any other online retailer if you feel comfortable with it. Sometimes you can get PLA for cheaper by going to a manufacturer's website rather than their Amazon page. Finally, some printing rules. Please keep these in mind as it is very important, especially for some of these, that you follow them. If you break any of these rules, we may have to meet with you to discuss any potential punishment or removal from the space. Do not print firearms or firearm parts under any circumstance. This includes something that may be used for either a gun or an airsoft gun, such as a silencer, barrel, slide, or etc. Anything that is a firearm or firearm part will require us to contact the UT Dallas Police. Cosplay and non-functional firearms are allowed, but contact an officer first as we do contact the police before asking questions just for our safety and your safety. Make sure to print a wall around any prints that would possibly upset somebody. Uh, we have seen some more adult objects printed in the past, so just for everybody's safety, um, if you are going to print something inappropriate, make sure you put a little box around it so nobody can actually see what you're printing. That way if somebody does try to go up and check, then we have a reason to say, you know, you chose to look at it, that's on you. Make sure you watch the first layer of your print. This is very, very crucial. The first layer of your print is where the errors can happen the most. So all you need to do, watch that first layer, rub your finger along it and see if any of it comes up. And if it sticks, you're good. Just do keep in mind for longer prints, such as ones lasting longer than 24 hours, uh, you probably do want to be there for 1-2% to of your print. Um, just something to keep in mind uh, so you can avoid failure as much as possible. Never touch the printer's SD cards. This is very, very important. There are a lot of variables that are super important to how the printer functions stored on those SD cards, and if you remove one of them, it could lead to a catastrophe. So please make sure they're left in there. Do not use them at all. All you need is provided to you. 
Finally, the this includes print fails, violating our rules, and any other reason we see fit. Now that you've gone through our slideshow, we would like to go through a short demonstration session with you. Please follow up by viewing the next section of our training available on our YouTube channel and through our Moodle instance. If you have any questions, please reach out to an officer. Thank you.